All right, so we're back from the south field. We've got everything in front of us here to make our tinctures. I've got the medicine man to my right here. And uh, he's going to walk us through how to make some self-heal tinctures with all the self-heal we just got. Remember, um, we were harvesting the self-heal because it cleanses the lymphatic system and it uh, also lowers blood pressure. So, we harvested on the first episode. This one we're going to show you how to tincture it. To start with, we need some simple, simple um, machines. This is a Ninja Blender where it shreds it all up. If you don't have it, you know, you can always use scissors and cut it up. The reason we like to cut it up is you get more surface area and the solvent can be extracted the solvent will extract more material that way. This is what we use for solvent. It is a vegetable glycerin, food grade, no GMO. This is our other ingredient, water. Um, the water should not be ever city water or any treated type or processed water. Uh, you want to get it from maybe distilled water if you're in the city out here you know a fresh stream or uh, in our case we have a spring that we gather the water at the next is just a measuring device you will want one of these I don't know what they're called but it scrapes the stuff out <laughs> a marking pen a container and of course a medicine Ben, do you have anything to add? Yeah, so we've got the organic vegetable glycerin here. And that's an important ingredient. That's like your binding compound. And there's a lot of other uh, tinctures out there that are made using alcohol. And we know alcohol is extremely toxic to the liver. It's dehydrating. And the other uh, plant-based alcohol tinctures could be maybe they're using corn, maybe they're using soy, which we know corn and soy is all genetically modified. And pathogens, they feed off of corn and soy. And if you're trying to kill off the pathogens with these herbal tinctures, then what are you actually doing by putting in corn and soy? You're feeding them. So we don't want to feed the pathogens. We want to get rid of the pathogens. Definitely want to get an organic vegetable glycerin based uh, tincture mix going. You don't want to use any alcohol. Uh, extremely toxic to you. Good point, Ben. I, I, I've been using this for a while and the emphasis is man does that take taste good where the alcohol was a burning sensation so it makes taking the tincture much more enjoyable and you'll actually taste the actual plant itself some people use alcohol because they're treating dried old uh, product you know what we have here is fresh product so this is going to make the very best tincture there is so the next process is cleaning the material. Uh, these guys had did pretty good job of not picking a lot of weeds <laughs> and stuff. So we may go straightly to the uh, chopping portion of this. So I just chop it up. Get the blender some help. start this it's gonna be a little noisy what I typically do is I'm gonna run this for 10 seconds but after five seconds I'm gonna stop let the product settle and then do the last five seconds so then I just let it settle okay 
Now we take our medicine jar. You want to make sure, sure these are clean, even if they're new. You got to uh, you got to make sure um, the factory hasn't left any impurities in it in the glass. Okay. The next step we're going to do is we're going to make up the solvent. So what I have found is that using 40% water and 60% glycerin works on everything. Rather than weighing, I just shove a bunch in this uh, mason jar and that works just as good. So you just fill it to the rim? Uh, correct. Put in as much as you can. Does anything happen to... Uh... Well, it'll shrink. And at some point, when it shrinks, uh, people say, oh, add more solvent. But I try to make the maximum strength medicine, so I don't typically add more solvent. Now, we're going to add the solvent next. Let me show you what what one looks like that's already been uh, aging. If you remember that uh, yarrow we found in the field, this is the, what remains of it. After you do that, add your solvent. Now it has to sit in this jar for anywhere two weeks and up. I always do it about a month. I also label the jar and the date so I can keep track. Then once uh, a day or whenever I walk by it I'll give it a little shake or I'll turn it upside down and turn it upside down that way but you can see the thickness of it. What does the turning upside down do? Well what you want the all the material to flow through the solvent so you can extract more. Do you ever, does it ever a way for you to come back do you ever notice any of the leaves or anything molding? No, that well, that's a good point, but that's one of the reasons you use more uh, glycerin than you do water because uh, you don't want that condition to happen. But harvesting, sometimes you know you'll harvest flowers, and while they're you're waiting for enough flowers, you're trying to keep those from rotting. So it's always good to dry things if you're not going to use it immediately. The best way is like here we use it immediately. Yeah. Alright, so now we're going to add our 40% water. So again, I'm not big on measuring, but it's under a cup. So that goes in. Okay. Remember, distilled water or pure water, no chlorine, no nothing like that. So now we're going to pour the glycerin. I just happen to uh, just happen to have this size. Normally we get it in the gallon size, but the vendor would happen to be out. So now you want uh, look at the thickness of that. Now you want uh, the 60% glycerin. So. Take it right to the top and shut it down. Now you can see as we pour into it, you got to be careful because it's going to flood it. You got to wait a little bit for it to soak down into the material. Vegetable glycerin, too. Don't be afraid by the name glycerin. Here, taste a little bit. Sweet, huh? Super sweet. And remember, medical medium says uh, that's brain food. So what is? So do the different herbs taste different? Oh yeah, that's what's neat about it. Like uh, I did some red alder alder bark, turned it red, 
Okay. And then when you taste it, it was bitter. It dried your mouth out. But within a couple of minutes after taking it, your mouth was back to normal and you didn't even notice it. What does that do? Well, uh, that again is for, uh, I think it's like inflammation. Some people say uh, it cures headaches. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, but it's a, it grows here all over, so it's an easy one too. So they all have different different tastes and then different colors, it sounds like, because the yeah. it made it red, huh? They're all sweet. I mean, if you've had uh, alcohol tinctures, this stuff is like sweet. In fact, you got to be careful, you know, like I had some yarrow on my hand the other day and the dog came up and licked it off because <laughs> it's so sweet. But yarrow you can eat, right? Yeah. So it's no... Yarrow actually enhances uh, vision and auditory to the brain. Interesting. All right, so we're pretty much empty. And that's where this thing comes in. You don't want to waste anything. What do you call that thing? I got no idea. The, the, the women use it, yeah. <laughs> and that's where I got it from. Okay. And make sure you clean everything right away. You don't want any contamination. Okay, and what are we going to call this? Uh, Southfield. Do you put? Do you label where you picked it, where you harvested? Yeah, it? if your memory's going bad and you can't remember the two hours we, you spend in the field picking this stuff, yeah, then you can. Uh, when I make my tincture labels, I always put on there where it was harvested. And remember, guys, you can't harvest this stuff where there's car pollution or you got to find some place where it's growing in nature. Yeah, and you remember Anthony, he talks about those wild blueberries and how powerful those wild blueberries are. So anything you harvest wild has to survive on its own. It doesn't have someone to water it and give it nutrients and fertilize it and help it grow. This stuff has to survive on their own. So uh, why the fact that we're harvesting these herbs wild, they're more powerful for us and they're going to do a lot more healing. So remember, this is what we just filled. By tomorrow the next day, it'll be down to here. Hmm. So it's just the, the marriage of the solvent and the plant. And so how many... When you, after this is all done, I imagine you put them in some container or something like that. Right, the bottling. You can buy those little tiny bottles with the dropper fulls, or you can you can uh, filter out and only collect the li liquids. We usually do it with a nut bag and a and a uh, press, and then get all the liquid, and then we filter it one more time just to make sure and then but if you if you don't want to invest in the bottles they're like with stopper and bottle it's probably 50 cents then you can just keep it in your mason jar uh, filter it and get the the uh, product out and all you'll have is the juice and how what's like the max amount of time you can leave this material in with the vegetable cliff? well they say two weeks is the normal time i always run it a month I've even had some that's been in the jar six months. Okay. So, you know, I, I, it depends on the herb and everything, but... Uh, so the, the, it doesn't go bad? Uh, I, I would suggest, you know, when you get done with this, you'll have two, about two cups of material, of liquid. So I suggest you separate the liquid from the solids and uh, after about a month. Cool. All right, that was simple. All right. That thank you, Mr. Enough. Ben. Yeah, thanks Amanda. for teaching me that. That was cool. No problem. I, and I hope everyone goes to, does it, you know, get yourself a book or nowadays people do it on the internet and find a plant and off you go with it. Well, see, now they have the recipe, so now they know exactly how to do everything. So all they have to do is go out in nature, find some plants and start harvesting them just like we did. We showed you a few, but 
when you get into it, it's almost like a detective. Oh, look at that plant there. <laughs> you know? And they'll grow in different areas. So it's like you'll find some by the river, the riverside. You'll find some in the field. You, right. The higher you go in elevation, you find different plants. So and after you tincture one, you know exactly what it is. And the next time you see it, it's easy to identify. identify yeah. All right. Well, thanks for having me. Yep. And uh, hopefully that that helps people get their own medicine. Yep. All right, so that's it for this video. Make sure to like this video. Make sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Click that little bell to get notified anytime one of our latest videos pops up. And then comment below. Uh, try making the tinctures. Tell us what you think. Tell us how you're making them, how you're doing things different. Um, we'd, we'd love to hear from you. So we'll see you on the next one. Bye.